This alone tutorial is about spectroscopic scales of Lewis acidity and Lewis basicity, which is useful in the context of Lewis acid base strain. Spectroscopy is the study of physical systems by electromagnetic radiation with which they interact or that they produce. Spectrometry is measurement of such radiations as a means of obtaining information about systems and their components. Spectroscopy has proved itself to be very useful in different fields of physical sciences. Indeed, in literature, there have been many works to develop, improve, and utilize spectroscopic methods for analysis of systems. Common methods of spectroscopy, like infrared spectroscopy, ultraviolet visible spectroscopy, and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy, are also commonly used in the context of Lewis acid-based strain to obtain information about Lewis acidity and Lewis basicity of chemical species. Here, it is good to mention that infrared spectroscopy is the spectroscopy that utilizes infrared and usually deals with uh, vibrational transitions or transition between vibrational states where infrared is the region of the electromagnetic spectrum located between regions of visible and microwave extending from about 780 nanometers to 20,000 nanometers although different sources might consider different ranges for regions of electromagnetic spectrum. Outer violet visible spectroscopy is the spectroscopy that utilizes ultraviolet and visible and usually deals with electronic transitions or transitions between electronic states of chemical species. Where visible is the region of the electromagnetic spectrum sensible by the human eye, located between regions of infrared and ultraviolet, extending from uh, 400 nanometers to 780 nanometers. On the other hand, ultraviolet is the region of the electromagnetic spectrum, located between visible and X-rays, extending from uh, 100 nanometers to 400 nanometers. Nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or NMR spectroscopy is the spectroscopy that utilizes nuclear magnetic resonance and transitions between nuclear spin energy levels, which happen at radio waves where Radio waves is the region of the electromagnetic spectrum with smallest frequencies and largest wavelengths, it's extending from millimeters to kilometers. Utilization of such common spectroscopic uh, methods like infrared spectroscopy ultraviolet visible spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy to obtain information about Lewis acidity or basicity of chemical species can be done in different ways. One way is to use them to obtain quantities like equilibrium constants, reaction enthalpies and so on. As non-spectroscopic scales of Lewis acidity or basicity. For example, in a Lewis acid-based reaction, measurement of amount of absorption by present chemical species at their characteristic frequencies, beside usage of laws such as Bell-Lambert law, can yield equilibrium concentration and therefore equilibrium constants.
of the reactions. Measurement of equilibrium constant at different temperatures can yield reaction enthalpies by use of equations like Van Hoff equation. So we see that spectroscopic methods and techniques can be utilized to obtain quantities like equilibrium constants and reaction enthalpies. Another way of utilization of spectroscopic techniques to obtain information about uh, Louis acidity or basis of chemical species is to use them to obtain spectroscopic scales. Where such scales use spectroscopic quantities like characteristic frequencies, wavelengths, wave numbers as a quantitative measure of Louis acidity or basically of chemical species. Here, by characteristic frequencies, wavelengths, wave numbers of chemical species, I mean frequencies, wavelengths, wave numbers of the electromagnetic radiations with which chemical species interact or that they produce. Uh, that is in the form of absorption, emission, scattering, and so on. Lewis acid-based interaction and Lewis adult formation can yield considerable change in the electronic structure of chemical species. As a result, spectroscopic quantities like characteristic frequencies, wave numbers, and so on, which depend on the electronic structure of chemical species, can also change. Here, we can have two different types of change, monochromic or redshift and gypsochromic or blue shift. Monochromic or redshift is the shift of a spectral band a characteristic frequency, a characteristic wave, number, and so on, to smaller frequencies and larger uh, wavelengths. On the other hand, hypsochromic shift or blue shift is the shift of a spectral band to higher frequencies and smaller wavelengths. Greater or stronger Lewis acid based interactions can result in greater change of electronic structure of chemical species and as a result, greater change of spectroscopic quantities like characteristic frequencies. Therefore, we usually expect spectroscopic quantities to be positively correlated with strength of Lewis acid-based interactions or with Lewis acidity or Lewis basicity of involved chemical species. In other words, we usually expect that greater change of spectroscopic quantities mean greater or stronger Lewis acid-based interactions. Therefore, we can build scales, spectroscopic scales, that use spectroscopic quantities as a quantitative measure of Lewis acidity or basicity of chemical species. Let's consider some examples. Here, as examples of spectroscopic scales of Lewis acidity and basicity, I'm going to discuss about phosphorus 31 NMR shift through ethyl phosphine oxide Lewis acidity, or simply Gutmann Becker method, hydrogen 1 NMR shift proton aldehyde Lewis acidity, or Charles method. IR shift methanol hydrogen bond basicity 
UV sheath for nitrophenol hydrogen bond basicity, IR sheath iodine cyanide uh, hydrogen bond basicity, and visible sheath diiodine hydrogen bond basicity. The first one, phosphorus 31 NMR sheath triethyl phosphine oxide Lewis acidity or Goodman Beckett method is based on the phosphorus 31 NMR chemical sheath of triethyl phosphine oxide as the reference Lewis base upon Lewis adduct formation with different Lewis acids in their pure form as the solvent. Here we have this Lewis adduct formation reaction. Triethyl phosphine oxide as the reference Lewis base reacts with different Lewis acids in their pure form as the solvent to produce this Lewis atom. This Lewis acid base interaction and this Lewis adduct formation results in change of electronic structure of triethyl phosphine oxide. Oxygen donates its lone electron pair to Lewis acid and its tendency to attract electrons of phosphorus increases. So phosphorus becomes more positive and as a result its phosphorus 31 NMR chemical shield increases. We usually expect phosphorus 31 NMR chemical shield to be positively correlated with the strength of this Lewis acid base interaction or the Lewis acidity of the Lewis acid under analysis. Two reference points are considered here. One is the hexane as a weekly Lewis acidic solvent with the phosphorus 31 NMR chemical sheet equal to 41 ppm. And another one is the strongly Lewis acidic antimony pentachloride with phosphorus 31 MMR chemical shift of 86.1 ppm. For this reference point, the goodman beckett acceptor number, abbreviated as AN, is assumed to be 0, while for this one it is assumed to be 100. And based on these values, Gutmann Becker acceptor number is equal to 2.21 times delta minus 41, where delta is the phosphorus 31 NMR chemical shift of the Lewis acid under analysis. Higher values of Goodman Beckett number, accepted numbers, are assumed to indicate higher Lewis acidities. Goodman Beckett acceptor number was proposed by Goodman in 1975 and then later extended by Beckett in 1996. It was among the first attempts to quantitatively measure Lewis acidities of solvents. He 
it is a salt of the scale. And in literature, its usage is common. Another similar scale of this acetyl is the hydrogen bond NMR sheath uh, croton aldehyde Lewis acidity or Charles method, which is based on the hydrogen bar NMR chemical shift of croton aldehyde as the reference Lewis base. Upon Lewis adult formation with different Lewis acids, the structure of four Lewis adults are as follows. This is the structure of the croton aldehyde. It is our reference Lewis space. It forms Lewis adults with different Lewis acids. In Charles' method, hydrogen bond. NMR chemical shift of this hydrogen is measured and like putman beckett method it is assumed that the hydrogen bond NMR chemical shift of this hydrogen atom is positively correlated with the strength of this Lewis acid base interaction and the Lewis acidity of this Lewis acid on the analysis. Here, another example of spectroscopic scale of Lewis acidity or basicity is the IR shift methanol hydrogen bond basicity. Methanol, CH3OH. In this scale, methanol as the reference hydrogen bond donor forms hydrogen bonds with different Lewis bases in dilute solutions in carbon tetrachloride CCL4 as the solvent at 298 Kelvin. So we have this reaction. The formation of hydrogen bond here results in change of electronic structure of OH bond and introduces significant decrease in its stretching vibration frequency. This method is based on the pathochromic shift of stretching vibration of methanol's OH bond upon hydrogen bond formation with different Lewis bases at these conditions. The scale, the associated quantity is the delta nu or the change in Wave number of methanol's OH bond, which is the difference between the wave number of OH bond in its free form in CCL4 minus the wave number of OH stretching vibration of methanol's OH. When it is hydrogen bundled, hydrogen bundled in CCL4. The value of this one is 
3644 cm to the minus 1. Like previous examples, here we also expect this quantity to be positively correlated with the strength of this for hydrogen bond. And so with the hydrogen bond basicity of the Lewis space under analysis. In the book with the title Lewis basicity and affinity scales, data and measurement, published by Wiley in 2010, Lawrence and Gall have reported about 800 values for this scale, spanning from about 3 cm to the minus 1 to 500 cm to the minus 1 from very weak free spaces to strong ones. We can also consider other examples of spectroscopic scales. Another examples are as follows. Another example here is the UV shift for natrophenol hydrogen bond basis. This scale is based on this reaction. Here we have hydrogen bond formation between four natrophenol and the Lewis base B. This scale is based on the badochromic or red sheet of wave number of pi to pi style electronic transition of for natrophenol as the reference hydrogen bond donor upon hydrogen bond formation with different Lewis bases in their pure form as the sum. So the UV ET is because of the pi to pi star electronic transition is related to that. Another spectroscopic scale here is the RR shift iron cyanide halogen bond basis. This scale is based on this reaction. Here, iodine cyanide, ICM, as the reference halogen bond donor, reacts with different Lewis bases to form halogen bond complexes. This scale is based on the badochromic or red shift of wave number of stretching vibration of IC bond of iodine cyanide as the reference halogen bond donor upon halogen bond formation with different Lewis bases in CH2, CN2, dichloromethane as the solvent in 15 degrees Celsius. 
Lawrence and Gal in their book have reported about 300 values for this scale. Another scale here is the visible shift diiodine halogen bond base scale, which is based on this reaction. Diiodine, as the reference halogen bond donor, forms halogen bond with different yeast bases. This scale is based on the hypsochromy or blue shift of wave number of visible band of diiodine, as the reference halogen bond donor, upon halogen bond formation with different Lewis bases. One interesting fact about this scale is the fact that we can see the change of visible band of diiodine upon halogen bond formation by naked eye. Color of solutions of diiodine change, change from violet for non-polar solvents like hexane, which are very weakly Lewis basic solvents to brown or orange for strongly polar solvents like amines and alcohols which can be considered as strongly Lewis basic solvents. In all of these scales we expect the change in wave number Here, the change in wave number of pi to pi star electronic transition. Here, the change in wave number of uh, stretching vibration of IC bar. Here, change in wave number of visible band of diiodine related to electronic transitions. In all of these cases, we expect change of uh, wave number to be positively correlated with the strength of Lewis acid base interaction or Lewis basicity of involved Lewis bases. These are some examples of spectroscopic scales. In literature, there are many other works too, in this regard. Like our previous discussions, here it is also good to consider that are these scales consistent with each other or not? One good way to check that is to see if there exists any linear relationships between two scales. Relationships in this form. Y is equal to mx plus b. For example, x is the values of one scale, x scale 1, and y is the values of other scale, for example, scale 2. m is the slope, b is the intercept. There are constants which can be taken by statistical methods. If uh, we have linear relationships such as these between this case with small errors and associated standard deviations, we can say that these cases are strongly correlated with each other and these cases are consistent with each other. Now the question is, do we have such linear relationships 
between these spectroscopic scales and also between spectroscopic scales such as these ones and non-spectroscopic scales like those use equilibrium constants. Do we have linear relationships between them? In general, the answer is yes. But such linear relationships are generally family dependent. Where by family, I mean chemical species which are structurally similar. For example, oxygen bases, nitrogen bases, or to be more specific, alcohols, ketones, esters, and so on. Here we have another important discussion. Do we need spectroscopic scales where we can have non spectroscopic scales like those that use equilibrium constants? And equilibrium constants chemically seem to be better for quantitative expression of Lewis acidities and base acidities. Since Lewis acids and bases are about tendencies of chemical species to act as Lewis acids or bases. Do we need spectroscopic scales when non spectroscopic scales, such as those that use equilibrium constants, seem to be better in this regard? The answer is yes, because uh, we need a huge amount of data here and unfortunately this case based on equilibrium constants can provide all of those data. Here we need a huge amount of data for comparison of least acidity or basicity of chemical species. For example, if we have M Lewis acids and in Lewis bases, since the order of Lewis acidity or basicity is not unique, in general, we will need m times n value of equilibrium constants, reaction enthalpies, or whatever, to quantitatively express. Lewis acidities or bases of these species. So we need a huge amount of data. On the other hand, there are not many cases or scales for which we can measure equilibrium constants easily and reliably by known techniques for diverse types of Lewis acids and bases at the same conditions of solvent and temperature. So here we have a gap between amount of required data and amount of data that can be provided by measurement of equilibrium constants. Spectroscopic scales can fill that gap for us, especially if we consider the fact that we might find real linear relationships between spectroscopic scales and non-spectroscopic scales like those that use equilibrium constants. Therefore, spectroscopic scales are useful and they have proved uh, themselves in analysis of uh, Lewis acid based behavior of chemical species. This is the end of this online tutorial. I hope you find it useful.